attempt harmonic motions in game development allow you to create interpolations between two positions like this. So it is basically an alternative to the linear interpolation most of you are probably using right now. Let me first give you some basics. Here we have a simple spring swinging back and forth. And as you can see, the motion is a kind of a sinusoidal function. This is basically how a spring would move if there is no damping or any other physical forces slowing it down. And this is therefore called a simple harmonic motion. We have two parameters, amplitude and frequency. Amplitude is simply the height of this curve and how far the spring goes back and forth. This is dependent on where the equilibrium position is and how far away we started from it. So in this case, the equilibrium position is somewhere around here and we started right around here. Uh, so the amplitude in this case is just this distance here. The frequency is a property of the spring itself and depends largely on the material that is used, like what are its elastic properties and all the good physics stuff. But we are making video games, so we can simply set the frequency to any value we want ourselves. Okay, so let me give you an equation of what I talked about. So a simple harmonic motion is nothing else but the amplitude multiplied by the cosine of the frequency multiplied by the time. Now for a damped harmonic motion, the only thing we do in addition is to add an exponential decay function. And this function looks something like this. It's an scalar and zero times e to the power of minus lambda multiplied by the time. If you look online, you will find that instead of lambda, uh, they will use something like b divided by two times the mass. But this is about video games, so and we want to have each object behave in the same way, so we just assume the mass is one. And the only thing we do now is to replace the scalar and zero with the simple harmonic motion from above here. And let me show you this in a graph plotter so you can see it for yourself how this looks. So here we have a few sliders for the frequency, for the amplitude and the dampening factor. This is the simple harmonic motion and this is the exponential decay function. Now we only multiply them together like this and we get this kind of function. So we start the height being equal to the amplitude, 2.6 in this case. And then we overshoot the target and going into the negative. Then we bounce back, getting closer and closer to the equilibrium at zero in this case. If we increase the frequency, we get more overshoots. And if we increase the dampening, the function will converge to zero a lot sooner. Back in Unity, let's activate the damped harmonic motion and Let's see how this looks like. Yeah, it behaves pretty much as you would expect. And so now it's time for the coding. So here we have the method. It's pretty much what you would expect. We have a return value of a vector three, which is the position where we are right now on the function. We have a start and a target and a time t. This uh, are our interpolation parameters. It's the same as uh, with LERP, with linear interpolation. We have an optional parameter of frequency, which is the same as the slider in the graph plot I showed you. And we have an error rate epsilon, uh, which is uh, measured in a distance. So epsilon of 0 0.01 means at the time t is equal to 1. When we reach target, the distance we return is at most epsilon away from target. And the reason we do it this way is so that we don't have to experiment with the dampening factor because it's not really what we are usually interested in. Usually we just want to reach the target position at t is equal to 1. So first we are clamping the time to be between 0 and 1. We are calculating the direction we are going and the distance of far we are going. And then we go straight to the exponential decay function. But uh, because we are also calculating the dampen factor automatically, I was able to simplify this a lot. And I want to show you how I did it. So please don't click away from the video because there's a lot of mathematics. Um, I'll explain it in simple terms. So we want 
we have the exponential decay function. We want it to be below this error distance we defined, our epsilon. So you can reformulate this and what you end up with is that the dampening factor must be above this value. And if we then know what our dampening factor must be, at least, we can put it back into the exponential decay function. And with, a, with some simple steps, uh, we reach this point. And this is exactly what I'm using in the code. So it's uh, actually very beautiful that it's simplified in this way. So this is the implementation of the formula I showed it just now. And then we um, calculate the simple harmonic motion and we simply multiply them together here. And we start from the target, which is the equilibrium. And that is basically all. It's just a, a few lines of code, but they can make a, a really huge impact. You can also extend this to other types, vector two, float, whatever you need. Here's how I use the damped harmonic motion uh, with the chain you saw at the start. It's just an, a coroutine that's uh, starting a timer and then using the, the time here as input. There's also a frequency you can define. Uh, yeah, this is basically all there is to it. So thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a follow, and most importantly, leave money on my bank account by buying one of my Unity assets. You can find a link to the store plus a link to the project in the description. Bye.